would like to thank you for joining us once again in our study of the Word of God and understanding the Father's heart. I'm Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you for blessing it in a very special way. Father God, we know that we need you in everything that we do. And we just ask by your divine spirit this day, Father, that you will give us understanding of your word, that, Father God, that you will bless your word, and that your word, Father, might become real to someone that will hear it today, Father. And, Father God, that you strengthen them, <coughs> every believer, Father, that they might know, Father, that you are their God and their hope, Father. And, oh, Lord God, we look around us, Father God, and see hopelessness on every side. But according to your word, Father, you told us to look up for our redemption, draw it nigh. And we thank you for it and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise be to the living God. We want to thank you once again for joining us in the study of God's word. In our last study, we talked about remember Lot's wife. And we said there was a purpose behind Jesus uh, stating of that particular uh, statement, remember Lot's wife. Just as the day of Lot's <clears throat> wife, that there was great distractions uh, with the people. And the same way it is in the world today. If you look around you, it seems as though everybody is distracted by something. You know, the Word of God says that it will be that same way on the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that when He returned, there will be dis, uh, great discord. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And there will be great distractions. And there will be false prophets on every hand. That is causing even greater distraction from uh, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we've been studying from the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, and we had um, got to the 22nd verse of Luke 17, 22. If you have your Bible, we'll ask that you turn there or just make a notation of it to go back and read uh, what we are will be discussing today about the Word of the Living God. The Word reads in Luke <clears throat> 22, uh, Luke seventeen twenty two, and he said unto him to the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. Jesus was referencing to the fact that he one day was going to leave them. Uh, they probably did not think that at that time because of uh, many possibly because of their advanced age and many of them being older than Christ himself. They did not think it was possible that he would uh, leave the scene before he did. But he was getting them ready for the fact that he knew that he came here on planet earth for a purpose. For God so loved the world that he sent his son into the world to die for the sins of the world. And you know, you would think that in the day and the time that we're living today, that many people would uh, gather within their own minds this great truth and begin to believe it. But dearly beloved, it is just of the opposite. It is a great rejection of that particular word that Jesus Christ was sharing with them. But he let them know that they would not see him and they would desire to see him uh, one day just as that. Just as today's born-again believers, those who really know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, and there's no doubt about it, and they are desiring his return. Yes, dearly beloved, those who really know him, and has really made God their Father, is truly desiring the return of the Son. 
They know that they can't fix this world. They know that this world is totally corrupted. They know that there's no way that God himself will bring peace on an earth the way it is today. There's no way possible. Uh, matter of fact, Jesus Christ said, I did not come to bring peace, but I have come to bring division. I have come to bring strife. I have come to bring division between the father and the son, the mother and the daughter, the, mo uh, the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. He has come to bring division. Why division? He has come to bring division because he desired to create for himself a family. A family that will be in allegiance with him and with uh, of the word of the living God. So you and I have to understand this, dearly beloved, even as uh, he was saying to the disciples, I will be departing. And one day you will desire that I had never left, but it's best that I go on to the Father so that I will be able to send the Holy Spirit who will be with you and living in you. Glory be to the living God. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. That is the greatest investment in the history of mankind is God's Holy Spirit living and dwelling in those who are his children. In the 23rd verse, and they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. Now, what is he referencing to here? He is because of their desire to see him, which he knew would be part of their life once he had left. He was letting them know that false prophets will arise and begin to declare the presence of Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said? Their false prophets will begin to arise and begin to declare the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. See here, see there, come and see and experience, they'll say to you, a move of God. Now look what Jesus Christ said, and they shall say to you, he's talking about false prophets and false teachers, they will say to you, see here, come there, go not after them, nor follow them. Glory be to the living God. So God is telling his disciples, there is coming a day that you will desire my presence, that you will have a, uh, a, a, an inkling of wanting to be with me again. And there will be those who will arise and say, come here, come there, for God is here, Jesus is here, and Jesus is there. And dearly beloved, we are living in that day and that time now. Do you realize that there are people who will take a, uh, a pizza, yes, that's, that's what I said, a pizza, and they will proclaim or say that they have seen the image of Jesus on a pizza. Or they will say that they've seen the image of Jesus on a curtain or in the clouds, in all these different places, or even an image of his mother somewhere. And Jesus Christ said, go not after them. Do not follow them, because dearly beloved, they are, they are trying to sell a lie unto you. Now, they may really believe that that is true, but dearly beloved, Jesus Christ said, go not there. Why? Because when I leave, I will be sitting at the right hand of the Father. I am not here on the earth. The mother of Jesus is not on this earth. Jesus was making it very plain and very clear that we must trust the Holy Spirit of God whom Jesus was going to send on the day of Pentecost, or at least his father was going to send on the day of Pentecost. And that's whom, dearly beloved, we have to trust in. We have to trust in the Spirit of God living on the inside of us and leading us into all truth. 
Glory be to the living God. Even the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit will teach us. And this is what Jesus Christ was preparing them for because he knew that false preachers and false teachers would come forth and they begin to declare that Jesus was still around, that Jesus was still moving in this earth. No, dearly beloved, according to God's word, even Stephen, when he was being stoned to death, what did he do? He said in the word of God, he said, as they covered their ears and was beginning to stone him, he said, I see the Lord Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father in glory. He did not say Jesus was beside him. He did not say that Jesus was around him. No, he said Jesus was standing at the right hand of the Father. And the Word of God said that they covered their ears and they began to stone Stephen to death because they desired not to hear the truth. And dearly beloved, there are those today who truly desire not to hear the truth. They want to hear fables. They want to hear the lies of men or the philosophy of men and women. But dearly beloved, the Word of God is what they deny. And I say to you today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, don't be running to and fro looking for Jesus, because I can say to you today, he is not here. Amen. Glory be to the living God. The Holy Spirit will come in. He will sup and live on the inside of you, and you then are a born again uh, a believer. So the word tells us what? Not to follow after that foolishness. Not to go after that. No matter how they declare that Jesus is here and Jesus is doing great works over there. Jesus Christ told them, do not uh, go. For as the lightning that lighted out of, out of the one part under heaven shine it unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. What is his day? The arrival of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God the Father, as the Word of God says, will make the, the earth the Lord Jesus Christ's footstool. And when he return, dearly beloved, it will be all his in him to do exactly uh, what he wants to do with it. Now look, the Lord was saying, let me show you how I will return. Now, no false prophet can duplicate this. Remember, he came as a child and a suffering lamb for the salvation of men and women and to please the will of the Father. But his return according to God's word, is as a conquering lion, and you will know that he has arrived. And not only will you know that he has arrived, according to God's word, even those who have pierced him or nailed him to the cross will also see him come on that day. Glory be to God. So he said, is First of all, he said in the very beginning that he will come uh, in a time and there will be no observation, as though there's no way that you can even uh, judge at that moment that he is going to return. And so, dearly beloved, that's why the Lord tells us to pray and to watch, because we are watching for his return, because we believe that he will return. We know that he will return. We may not know the hour. We may not know the day. We may not know the minute or the month or even the year. But one thing we have a guarantee for is that he is to return. Amen. So we have to put our hope in that. And as he said, he will return what as the lightning lightning shoot across the sky and appearing worldwide. It will be quick and sudden, and there will be no time to get right if you ain't right with God already. Amen. 
You need to get right with God. You need to be born again. You need to know that Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of the living God, is living on the inside of you. Because the Word says that if you have not the Spirit of God in you, then you are none of His. So it's very pertinent that you know that God lives on the inside of you. Don't take a chance with this. It's not worth it. Because what is at stake? Your soul is at stake. And one of the great distractions of the day that we are living in right now is false teachers and false prophets taking the faith that you have and parting it or directing it toward things and gathering things in this life. In other words, testing God to see if he's going to supply and provide everything that is on your wish list. Dearly beloved, the greatest wish, the greatest desire that you and I ought to have as a born again believer is the ultimate return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're distracted, and if you're not looking forward for this, the word warns you to remember Lot's wife. She was distracted. And the Bible says because of that, she turned into a pillar of salt. She became useless for the works of God. And you today can become useless for the work of God. No matter how much you declare you're doing God's will and you're doing God's work, if you are distracted, dearly beloved, you are not doing the will and the work of the living God. I tell you what's happening. You're going through motions. Many people go to church today and they're simply going through the motions. They can't wait to service to be over with. They can't wait until they can get uh, before uh, uh, other things that they desire to do in their life. They're just trying to get rid of this time that they're spending with God. But not only that, they're not spending time with God in their closet or in their prayer place during the week because God desire a relationship with you. But many times people are walking in religion. They're going to church uh, each and every day. And they believe that somehow God ought to be pleased with that because they are going to church. And they believe that the fact of doing that itself makes them holy. And dearly beloved, it does not make them holy whatsoever. What makes them holy, what makes them right before God? is their relationship with him. And this is what Jesus was establishing with them as <clears throat> he spoke to them, letting them know, one day I will not be around, but my spirit will be around, living on the inside of you from my Father. So go not there where they say, uh, come over here or come over there because I am there, because they are telling you, a lie. They are trying to deceive you. Now get this. If Jesus Christ was saying this to his disciples at this time, just imagine how many false prophets, false teachers, philosophers, false doctrines that have, have, that have gained weight in the minds and the thoughts of, of God's people. Multitudes multitudes and God does not want us to be distracted by the things that the enemy is setting forth in the earth today because in the book of Daniel it speaks about running to and fro and gaining all type of knowledge and gaining all type of wisdom but yet at the same time not experiencing a true relationship with the living God they're running here uh, to and fro but yet not gaining anything from the Almighty God. But the Word of God tells us uh, the Son of Man in His day will gather all the believers together in uh, that day. Those who are, who are uh, in their grave and those who are yet 
alive. And so dearly beloved, we ought to be anticipating that day. We ought to be waiting for that day. Because according to God's word, Jesus Christ was prepping them and getting them ready for that day. For he says, but first, glory be to God. Now Jesus is establishing something here. <clears throat> Before I go away, he says this, but first must the Son of Man suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. I'm not going anywhere until I suffer many things. Now, Jesus Christ realized that he would be ridiculed, he would run for his life, and every evil work possible that could be done against him would be done to him as he lived on this side. And that he ultimately would be totally rejected, not only by those who would nail him to the cross, but even his own disciples, whom the word of God said had departed from him on that day. And dearly beloved, the mercy of God. He still drew every one of those disciples back unto themselves, unto himself. And realize this, they had walked away at that moment. That moment of great temptation, they walked away from the Lord Jesus Christ and even denied him. But God's grace and mercy was there. But dearly beloved, I want you to know something. There was something that was settled in those disciples' heart that made them continue to walk. Even though they hid, and the word of God says when Jesus Christ uh, uh, rose from the grave and he went into the grave. He rose from the dead and he went to the grave and he ministered unto those who were in the grave at that time. And then when he came back and he met with the disciples after that, before he went ascended unto the Father, he met with the disciples and he began to share uh, with them. And they still as we heard of doubting Thomas, still did not believe. But dearly beloved, they believe. But they believed even more so on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to reside and to live in them. And now they had the power of God working in them. They did not need to look for Jesus in different places because now the spirit that lived in Jesus was now living in them. Glory be to God. And he will live in you and I if we accept, it, uh, accept that. But the word of God says that he would be uh, rejected by the entire generation that once did love him and supported his works. But then ultimately they rejected him and desired a murderer to live rather than Jesus Christ. They desired Barabbas, the insurrector. That's whom they desire. And dearly beloved, even today, our world desire Barabbas. They want to see one who can get things done. They want to see one who claims that they can bring peace throughout the entire world. They want to see someone who can get along with just everybody. That's what the world is clamoring for today. And dearly beloved, Jesus Christ says, no, that is not of but rather, I did not come to bring peace to this world, but rather a division so that I can choose and create and elect myself a family that I can be with for the rest of eternity. This is what Jesus Christ is looking for, a permanent family that will one day sit with him on that great day and that 
great supper of the Lamb. That's what he's looking for today, beloved. And the question is, are you invited? Now the word tells us to remember Lot's wife. Because she rejected it by simply turning around and desiring that which she had left behind. And many times, even as believers, when we first fall in love with Jesus, we begin to run at towards him with full force, never looking behind us. But after a while, after a season, we begin to peer over our shoulders and begin to look backward. And Jesus Christ said, no man is worthy of the kingdom of God if he put his hands to the plow and look back. So dearly beloved, I say to you today, look forward. If you are a born again believer, you need to start looking forward again. You need to quit looking backward. You need to start anticipating the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are not a believer, you need to become one today because your time is running short. Amen. Glory be to God. I want you to know that we love you and we care about you. And I want you to know that we uh, lift you up before the Lord because we know that our Lord is capable of doing all things but fail. And we'll ask that you will join us on Sunday mornings between the hours of 6 and 10 a.m. at 92.7 KZJM or online. You can also um, receive us there at www.927 kzjm.org or you can check us out on Facebook at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown where there are many videos and writings about uh, the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will bless you in a very special way and that you will continue to join us in these insightful uh, studies of God's holy and divine word. Be blessed this day.